Okay, yeah, speaking of, I hope you're working on your, uh, your uh, calculus Christmas carol because I already had some teachers this morning at the faculty meeting say, hey, are you doing that again this year? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, good, good, make sure you stop by our class. So, um, <clears throat> All right, example five, we got uh, the graph of H of X is given below. Uh, is, is it continuous? Look at it, is it continuous from negative four to four? Oh, no, it's not, no, it's not. So what we want to do is uh, from left to right, we want to find every critical value and then at each critical value, determine if there's a local max, a local min or neither. Local max, local min or neither, okay? So starting at negative four, is negative four a critical value? Yes, why? It's an endpoint. So that means that it's in the domain, right? And the derivative there then is what? Does not exist. Okay. So would that be a local max, local min, or neither? neither? Neither. Good. It's a critical value, but it's neither. I'll put N for neither. Because it's an endpoint, right? From left to right, then, where would the next critical value be? What X value? Remember, the value itself is, is the critical value, the X value. Where would the next critical value be? Negative 3.5? No. No. Where? Negative three, is negative three a critical value? Well, is it in the domain? I see it's in the domain, yeah. Is it continuous there? No, so what's the derivative? Undefined, it is a critical value. Yes, it is, yes, it is. This is a critical value. Is that a local max, local min or neither? When I say is it, I'm talking about the Y value, right? So let's go to the Y value. Remember the ultimate litmus test. Immediately to the left, lower. Immediately to the right, lower. Oh crap, guess what? It's a local maximum. Yep, that's right. Do local maximums have to occur in nice tidy hills and valleys? No, they can occur at discontinuities. We didn't see any yesterday at the discontinuities, as long as it's in the domain, okay? So that, that will be a local maximum. All right, cool, yeah. So where would the next critical value be from left to right? Negative one, good. Uh, it's in the domain, but it's not continuous, so this is a critical value. Is this Y value at one a local maximum or neither? Neither, right. To the left, we have lower. To the right, we have higher. So <clears throat> that'd be kind of funny if that was like John Travolta dancing, right? In Saturday Night's Fever. You'd be like, yo, John, why is one of your arms so much longer than the other? He's like, I don't know. I was born that way. And maybe he's dancing to Lady Gaga. I don't know. That was too many musical jokes in one frame. <laughs> okay. um, it's not. Is one of his arms actually longer? Is it? I don't know. I thought. I thought yeah, just No. Uh, not that I, not that I know of, not that I know. But this guy has one arm. This guy, this guy has one arm that's longer than the other, right? He probably did that trick when he was like little, like, oh my gosh, look, right, right. Ugh. It's possible. It could, it could be. It could be. It probably is. You know, if it is, I don't even know if he knows. To the right of negative one, where's the next critical value? Bless you. At one, that's the next one. Oh, there you go, Ethan. It's all of those X values. Why is it all of them? Well, they're all in the domain and the what is all zero there. The derivative is all zero there. Yeah. Now, here's, here's what I wanna ask you. Is two then at each of those, that little piece of that horizontal line, any piece of that horizontal line, pick your favorite value of two. Is that value a local maximum or a local minimum? No. What is it? It is. Yes. It is. Because really the local max and local min go back to the absolute max or min. Okay. Remember we said equal to. So Instead of saying it's an absolute maximum if it's the biggest value, we say that it's the absolute maximum if there are no others bigger than it. 
if it's greater than or equal to. So as long as there's nothing bigger, it's an absolute max. Well, the local maximums are basically the same definition if on a small interval containing it, it is the absolute maximum, then it's a local maximum. So believe it or not, and this is kind of a trivial case, you're not gonna really be having to identify this on the AP exam. It's just one of those finer points of the theory. Every single Y value on the interval strictly between negative one and one. Okay, these are all critical values. And then the Y values, so all the Y values that equal two on this interval, these are all going to be not just local maximums, but they're all, guess what? Well, they would be global maximums too. Yeah, but they're local maxes and they're local minses. Can you believe that? So can the maximum and minimum be the same value? Yes, and that's the rare case of a horizontal line. There's no value, like if you zoom in here, there's no value bigger than two, therefore it's the local max, but on this interval, there's also no value smaller than two. So it's also the local min. So the horizontal lines are kind of the exceptional case, all right? We're not really interested in that. So let's jump to one. Y'all said the next critical value would be at one. That's the next meaningful one. And it is a critical value. It was close, right? If we just saw that part of the graph, would one be a critical value if that was truly what we had? No, because now there's no dot. But because uh, there is a dot, we know it's in the domain. And now because it's not continuous, it is a critical value. Is the dot a local max min or neither? It's a local min. Good. Because immediately to the left, bigger. Immediately to the right, bigger. And that is what John Travolta's neighbor's arms look like. Yeah, I guess, Hank, I don't know. I've never seen his neighbor. I do know that John Travolta lives in Ocala, Florida in an airport subdivision. He's a pilot, like some of y'all's dads, right? Um, his driveway is like a little, little driveway that comes out of his garage door hangar and it goes out to uh, yeah, yeah, he lives in an airport community. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right, what about uh, number two? Is two a critical value? Yes or no? Yes, good. The dot's there, not continuous. So derivative doesn't exist. Is the dot a local max, a local min, or neither? Neither, why? Well, if I go left or right, like by a certain amount, they're the same. But when we look at it, we have to go not all that way. We have to go immediately to the left and immediately to the right. Yeah. And notice I made the dot substantially large. So it almost kind of gives you no, no room to go left and right. But the dot itself is really how big in, in reality. It's infinitely small. So you have plenty of room to go left and have values that are bigger and write that in values that are bigger. So this is actually a local min. And of course, because uh, we already said it's a critical value, we'll put CV there. Where's the next critical value? At three? That's where the function zero. Oh, yeah, we're looking for a slope of zero, not a y value zero. Four, four is a critical value. It's in the domain, but it's neither. Good, it's a critical value, but because it's an endpoint, it's neither, yeah. And of course, if this dot were gone, then it would not be a critical value, right? Not all endpoints are critical values. They actually have to be an end point. So let Braden finish his thought. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So if the dot wasn't there and it wasn't a critical value, could it still be a local? No. No. Oh, wait, no. no. Right. If, if that dot were not there, it couldn't be a local min ever, really. But if the dot were not there, it couldn't even be an absolute min. Because to be a minimum, it has to be a Y value. We have to be able to stand at that point. And if it's undefined there, then it's nothing. It's a discontinuity, not another domain. Yeah. Um, yeah, if we want to look at absolute min, let's look at that. Yes, this would be an absolute minimum value. 
and location. And then all of the Y values, um, well, there's only one Y value of two, but it would occur at infinitely many places up there. So yeah, two would be the absolute max and whatever that is, negative two would be absolute min. Good, so remember, even though it's an absolute min, it's an, it wouldn't be a local min, okay? Because it has to occur on, on an open street. All right, so can, can local max and mins occur at discontinuities? Yes, they really, really can, okay? Uh, it just has to still be at a critical value, so it has to be in the domain. All right, um, we're gonna jump down to uh, at applying the EVT. Anyone want to review the EVT for me? I'll start you off. If from, I thought you were going to say it with him, and I was going to jinx y'all, and then peace and quiet for the rest of the day. Yeah, if F is continuous on the closed interval from A to B, then yes, F has a max and a min where? In France? on the closed interval, which means it could be an endpoint. It could be at an endpoint, obviously. All right, so when we get to the last section in this, in, or is it when we get to the optimization section, we're gonna be finding absolute max mins of, of word problems. We're not gonna always be able to justify using the method we're gonna use now, but if the EVT applies, we're gonna be able to justify and find the extrema using what's called the closed interval argument. We're going to be able to find them and justify it using what's called the cold the closed interval argument. Okay, so um, here's how we're going to do it. All right, to find the absolute that extrema of a continuous function on the closed interval from A to B. Number one, we got to identify the endpoints. That's pretty easy, right? Because they're going to be handed to you, right? <laughs> Let's look at this function on this closed interval. So there you are, they're A and B. Now what we need to do is we need to find any critical values that live where? between A and B, you might find critical values that live outside the interval. They might be critical values of the function, but we're not gonna use them because they don't live on the interior. That's very, very, very important. So we're gonna be verifying that A, they're in the domain, and then B specifically if they're in the interval. There was a guy in New Braunfels several years ago who ran for some county seat, whatever, and he was ahead. And they found out that he didn't live in the precinct that he was running for, and he was disqualified. It's like, oops, I can't, I can't run for the mayor of France because I don't live in France. I can't be the mayor of France because I don't live in France, right? I can be prime minister of New Braunfels. Of what? You can be prime minister of Britain and president of the United States at the same time. Yes. Oh, I, okay. It is like, are you being serious? You're not making like it's possible to be the United States president and the Russian prime minister at the same time. Dual citizenship. Oh, well, hey, maybe, maybe you should be the first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I was thinking. I, 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 can, uh, I can apply for Finnish citizenship if I just learn either Finnish or Swedish, which I hear is a lot easier. So I'm thinking that maybe before I die, I want to claim my Finnish citizenship. And then maybe I can run for office in both countries. Wouldn't that be crazy, though? Wouldn't that be crazy? It's possible. We'd have, we'd have, we'd have, a, we'd have a, an American guy who speaks English with citizen, citizenship and speaks Swedish citizen. Finishing Swedish ship. But, I, but you wouldn't stop at Britain, though. You'd have to see how many other countries you can run for office in. You don't stop at two. Right. Like, uh, isn't there like a little oil platform in the middle of the ocean that you can buy, like, uh, royalty? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Let me see if I can get my words correct here. Um, identify the endpoints. Find the critical values on the interior. Jinx, jinx. All right, once we have all of the candidates, all we have to do is figure out what the Y value is at the endpoints and what the Y value is on the interior at the critical values and then compare them. That's it, it's that easy, okay? So you can think of it as being a contestant on the game show, which I don't think it's ever really been a game show, but I can imagine 
that it would be probably the most popular game show of all time, even more, more so than Jeopardy, right? Extrema with two exclamation points. The excitement's built right into the title. See that? Now, here's all you have to do to be a contestant on the show. You have to be an endpoint or you have to be a critical value on the interior. So uh, I found this picture on Google Images. It's, it's uh, lost some resolution over the years, or maybe that's was the original resolution. I can't remember. But you've got, uh, you've got the redhead who's the left endpoint. You got the creepy guy, bald guy, uh, who's the right endpoint. And that, that could have been me a couple of weeks ago, right? And then you've got a single critical value on the interior that is the fist pump girl, okay? So let's say we have three candidates. You might have zero candidates on the interior. You might end up with two or three candidates on the interior. So you're always gonna have at least two contestants, right? The two endpoints, but you might have more. In this case, the image had one interior person. So if we let... Thank you. 